Hello, my name is Hannah Muskell and I'm an organic chemistry student here at Miracosta. Today I will be talking about the drug metformin, which is used to treat insulin resistant diabetes. So I'll be talking a little bit about the history as well as the uh, mode of synthesis, some potential mechanisms of action, clinical applications, and then some side effects. So metformin is the number eight most prescribed drug in the US. Um, a lot of this has to do with type two diabetes as metformin is thought to be the safest and most effective form of treatment. Um, type two diabetes is insulin resistant. So the form of treatment for hyperglycemia, which is um, increased blood glucose levels is usually in insulin, but for type two diabetes, um, another method is needed. So galagene, which is present in goat's rue or the French lilac plant, which is pictured here in the upper right hand corner, was used in medieval Europe to treat this form of diabetes, but due to its toxicity, it's not really used anymore in its natural form. But in 1957, John Stern, the scientist right here, noticed that galagene is very similar to the drug metformin, and so he began using it to treat his patients. Um, it was discovered in 1922 by Emil Warner and James Bell. And then um, in 1994, it gained its FDA approval when Gerard Daniel, Anita Goodman, and their team of researchers um, tested it and got this drug approved. So the chemical name is dimethyl biguanide as there are two methyl groups and um, it's a guanide type drug. Um, here's the structure below. So I'll talk a little bit about the synthesis. Um, it's usually synthesized from cyanoguanidine and dimethylamine hydrochloride. So cyanoguanidine is the compound on the right, and then dimethylamine hydrochloride is on the left. So the first step is called the deprotonation. So that's essentially where the lone pair on the nitrogen takes the hydrogen from this other compound, pushing the electrons and getting rid of the positive charge. The second step is um, a nucleophilic attack. So the lone pair electrons on the nitrogen attack this triple bond right here, pushing the electrons onto the nitrogen. And then there's an intramolecular proton transfer where the negative recharged nitrogen takes the hydrogen, removing its positive charge and forming the fi final compound. Um, the exact mechanism of action is not entirely known, but blood glucose levels are lowered. Um, this is thought to have to do with AMP kinase, which is an enzyme. Um, it, that's mediated by the gut microbiome. Um, another possible mechanism is increased GDF-15 secretion, which suppresses the appetite, resulting in less glucose consumption, and that could explain the lower circulating levels of glucose. Um, another possible mechanism is decreased um, gluconeogenesis, which is the synthesis of new glucose molecules. And this is also thought to be mediated by the gut microbiome and um, upregulation of the enzyme AMPK. So the gut microbiome is a really hot topic in medicine right now. Um, microbial dysbiosis is the state in which pathogenic species outnumber the beneficial species. So recent research has demonstrated that metformin consumption increases um, several beneficial bacteria species, including A. municifila and B. bifidum. Um, and then it inhibits the growth of pathogenic species, including the intestine of Bacter family. Um, the potential mechanisms have to do with AMP kinase activation as well as short chain fatty acid production. So a Colombian study found that metformin, con metformin consumption resulted in increased levels of beneficial bacteria species, including B. bifidum and um, decreased pathogenic species. And these beneficial species that were upregulated through the consumption of metformin have been linked to short chain fatty acid production which could explain the decreased blood glucose levels. Um, as previously mentioned, it's used to treat type two diabetes, but it's also used for polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, predominantly as a second line defense for infertility. Um, it can also be used for weight loss and increased lifespan in non-diabetic patients. So these, the longevity connection is receiving a lot of press in the media right now as um, consumption of metformin could increase a person's lifespan. There's limited research given that longevity studies do take time, but some animal research with mice found that those who consumed metformin had longer lifespans. Um, part of the reason that metformin is so common for type two diabetes is that it's more effective than alternatives such as sulfonylureas. Um, and there was a 42% lower risk of diabetes induced mortality compared to other alternatives. 
And it's also um, more economically effective as metformin costs a little bit less to make than these other possible alternatives like DPP-4 inhibitors. So I'll talk a little bit about the, the weight loss connection. So there was a clinical trial of non-diabetic overweight and obese participants, and it found that those who consumed metformin lost more weight than those who consumed the placebo. And um, one of these possible explanations could be through activation of AMP kinase, which um, decreases gluconeogenesis, the production of new glucose in the liver. Um, it could also be used to counterbalance um, weight gain from other medications. So that is another one of the reasons that metformin is so widely prescribed. And then the longevity connection. So the potential mechanisms are pretty similar, um, AMP kinase and also um, increased antioxidant production. So again, there's limited research with humans. One study found that it can extend the lives of cancer patients. This does have to do with the telomeres um, inside of a cell. And the exact mechanism is not known. More research is necessary and it will take time, but I predict that in the coming decades, this will receive a lot more press and potentially metformin will be used recreationally by um, people with money. People that can afford to purchase this drug will have access to longer lifespans. So it's pretty interesting. Um, side effects are limited, um, mostly just gastrointestinal upset. Um, this was only found in five to 10, of, five to 10 percent of patients. So it's considered to be relatively safe. Um, so that's like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and constipation. Um, one of the major concerns that physicians have about prescribing this drug is lactic, lactic acidosis. Um, this is very rare, um, high blood lactic acid levels, and it usually only occurs when the patient is taking too high of a dosage or if they have an underlying condition. So the contraindications are kidney impairment and liver impairment. These are um, two conditions that have been linked to lactic acidosis, but it is very rare. Um, vitamin B12 deficiency has also been reported as metformin um, can decrease the absorption of this vitamin. Um, in conclusion, metformin is considered to be the best form of treatment for insulin-resistant diabetes, and it can also be used for polycystic ovarian syndrome, weight loss, and increased lifespan. Um, it was derived from the French lilac plant, like many drugs. They are discovered in nature, and then due to the high toxicity, they're taken off the market and replaced with a more concentrated form. Um, the mechanism is not entirely known, but it does have to do with AMP kinase activation as well as the gut microbiome. So a special thank you to Dr. Tross and Mira Costa for all of the support through this process. And these are my references. Thank you.